Hello everyone and welcome to Hartford, Alaska, Native News and Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green, thank you so very much for joining us. Hello to our good friends across America. And hello to our good friends in the Russian Far East, Canada and Alaska. On today's program we travel all over the state. We follow some youth from Anchorage in the Urban Rural Exchange Program as they visit people in rural Alaska, actually living with families. Also, we travel to the beautiful village of Cake, Alaska and find out what the youth are doing there in a brand new program. Also, we are back up north to Unalakleet, Alaska, where the residents are helping to build a multi-million dollar health clinic. It's a great show. I'll be back with all that and more right after this. Heartbeat Alaska is pleased to announce a brand new official hotel. We're brought to you now by Millennium Alaskan Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat Alaska. And... Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by Frontier Flying Service. Thank you, Frontier, for getting Heartbeat Alaska airborne. Hi, I'm Mark from Scan Home, and we are proud to sponsor Heartbeat Alaska. Scan Home, serving all of Alaska's home and office furnishing needs. Thank you, Scan Home, for making Heartbeat Alaska possible. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. We've been covering businesses, families, and individuals since before Alaska was a state. And we'll keep doing it until the glaciers melt on Mount McKinley. Primera Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska. We're here. We're with you. Cake is a village of about 700 residents. The only way to get there is by boat or plane. And for the youth, all across America in towns big and little, they're always looking for something to do. Sometimes they get restless. Well, we're going to meet right now a couple people in Cake, Alaska are doing something about it. There is no doubt that Cake is a beautiful place. It's a friendly village of unlocked doors and quiet streets. Hugging the shore of Kupernoff Island in southeast Alaska, the Tlingit people here harvest the fish from the sea and timber from the land. Over the past hundred years, these two industries became the driving force in Cake's economy. But with the recent downturn of both these industries, the streets are even quieter than normal. It's easy for the children here to find themselves wandering those streets with little to do and plenty of time to do it. What do you want, Cameron? 
Rhonda Wooten knows what that feels like. Because I know when I grew up here, there was hardly nothing to do, nowhere to go, play out. <laughs> That's why she worked so hard to make this little building into exactly the kind of place these kids need. We'll be having more programs coming up this spring. We'll have um, Image, Image Makers is a, a photography class. One of my volunteers is going to run. And career launch for the teens, smart girls for 10 to 15 year olds. So I'm eventually slowly getting more programs in here. There's just me working right now and it's kind of hard for me to do everything because I I'm the manager the coordinator and the program instructor and everything Ready, set, go. here the kids find all kinds of ways to keep busy but it goes beyond games. They do homework, and if they don't have homework, they either have to choose to read or do power pages. They get PowerPoints every time they read. At the end of the month, one of the most points will get uh, a certificate from our pizza place for five bucks. And they get to get what they want. So they come in and do their homework. And usually our arts and crafts we inv involves like doing birthday cards for all the elders and cake. As a matter of fact, one of the most popular things in the youth center isn't a game at all. Get it ready. More and more people here are turning to traditional Tlingit culture, holding together a community stressed by a tough economy. Justin McDonald is part of the movement. He's very familiar with what can go wrong with youth. I work for the Division of Juvenile Justice and uh, I get to work hand in hand with a probation officer, juvenile probation officer, but I'm not, uh, I don't have the authority, all the authority that they have. But I get to monitor our kids that get in trouble here with the juvenile justice system, with the courts, and also work with uh, the youth in the community as far as inter prevention, intervention, coming up with alternative activities. And part of my program, which was a blessing also, is that it allowed us to buy stuff for our culture group. Justin began a traditional singing and dancing group for the youth. Everything's just now starting to come out. The kids' voice is starting to get it past that shyness and sounding off. So they're really, really enjoying this. We're learning new songs, a lot of kids' songs also. Every time we perform and get out in the community, you'll see little ones like these, these toddlers and young ones like Louise here who will come out and just dance with us. I think it's because of that. Um, I believe it's because of that drum beat, that beat of the drum is, you know, they hear that when they're inside their mother's womb. You ready? It's important to note the style of drumming and singing the kids are practicing today are not part of Clinket culture. As a matter of fact, it's not from Alaska at all. The song that we're gonna do is a victory song that was given to us from uh, an all-ladies drum group in California. We went to a powwow in Juneau. 
by traveling to different cultural events, both in Alaska and outside. These youth share their own Tlingit songs with others and learn about native cultures from outside. So this is lower 48 culture. And uh, so we practice a lot of lower 48 songs, but everyone in the group also dances and sings Tlingit. But the kids that travel to these events pick up more than a new style of drumming. We're getting bigger every year, and, and we've gone to more, we've gone to powwow. It's starting to get calls now to come because when I mean, we go this last powwow, we took 17 kids. It was great. <clears throat> it really does a lot for the kids' self-esteem and self-confidence. Even though the floor 48 culture, you know, it's they're not um, they're not switching to another culture. All they're doing is just honoring another culture. Like Rhonda, Justin is working hard to see the youth center make even more of a difference to cake. This really gives the kids, you know, this age, from say like junior high on down, really gives them something to do, some place to go and just be themselves, get back listen to the music, you know, be somewhere safe away from um, <clears throat> any, any of the negative influences out there, you know, kids hanging out, smoking cigarettes or drinking or doing drugs. This gets a lot of them away from that. For centuries, the Cake tribe of Clinkets walked the beaches around Kupernoff Island. Though the youth center isn't very big, the kids that come here will soon be the caretakers of this island. What they learn now will be the future of cake. Alaska's premier commercial, documentary, and event production team. Whenever and wherever you need video production, our experienced, dedicated professionals give your project the extra edge you're looking for. Alaska Native owned and operated. Genie Green Productions, your complete video production service. It's about not doing drugs. It's about knowing where you come from. What you do. And who you are. It's about not doing drugs. from beautiful Southeast Alaska to beautiful Northern Alaska. Let's follow some students now as they travel from Anchorage to villages such as Amonic and Tuxuk Bay, part of the Alaska Humanities Forum attempts to bridge the rural-urban divide.
No. You don't get to come with me to Tokusok Bay. I don't think they let you on the airplane. I cer certainly think any program like this that exposes students or children such as Brittany to new cultures and new ways of life, different types of people is going to be a real value to their education and their growing up. I was going for the uh, snowboard intensive and then uh, my parents decided that we should do the native Alaska trip one so I guess I'm stuck with that one now. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that Clark will come back with a renewed interest in, in trying things that, that perhaps stretch him. I don't want to admit to this of course on camera so don't show us to him but it did in fact make me a more well-rounded person. We sent them on the early flight, the 6 o'clock flight, and they went to the communities of Eek, Imanek, Upper Cascade, Kotlik, Scammon Bay, Makoyak, Tuxik Bay, and St. Mary's. There's 11 different Alaska Native cultures, and what better way to explore it, understand it, feel it, than by interaction among people. The urban-rural divide exists in perception. To the extent that people in, in rural areas feel that the urban people don't understand their lives or vice versa, there is a chasm and sometimes that chasm gets filled with anger. We're going to try and take that chasm and fill it with knowledge. Listen to the stories of the young people who went out and the stories of the young people who came into Anchorage and hear what they have to say because they can tell you from their heart how this experience changed their life. As I was in the plane looking down, you know, I realized just even the amount of distance between Anchorage and Tuxuk is so great, it just feels like you're, you really are in a whole new world. My first impression was that, that it was very, very small. I mean, I went on a trip to Russia, and the way people live in Russia is a lot more similar to how things are in Anchorage than the way people live in the bush. It's a totally different world out there. It's just amazing to me. I've lived in Alaska my whole life, um, lived in Anchorage, and these people, I mean, given they're a ways away, but they're in the same state, and I had no idea that people lived like this. While I was in the village, I got to travel to Stebbins across the frozen ocean on a snow machine and sled with my native family. Um, they, the reason they went out there, it was like a big celebration for potlatch for native dancing, little girls and boys for their first time. They're caring, loving people, and the culture is warm and accepting. My Yupik name was Chukayak. <laughs> The whole coming together for native dancing and having it be with your whole community, I think that's a really special thing. As I uh, got to know the people, I began to feel like it was more like a, a very large family living in one city. I like their food a lot. I tried lots of different stuff. Caribou, moose, you know, salmon, whale. And we went hunting for about eight hours straight, I think, and we were on these snow machines in the cloudy, cloudy cold weather, and we were hunting for ptarmigan for my host mother's biology class, and she was gonna dissect these ptarmigan in front of the class. Everybody simply referred to everybody else as cousins, uncles, aunts, brothers and sisters, and parents and grandparents. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> It is very easy to sit in your urban community and to kind of lock yourself out from the rest of the world. This program pulls them outside of that and says, take a look at some other people. Take a look at other young people your own age who come from a diff completely different town, a completely different background. You can go to the Aces game again in Anchorage, or you can go to another basketball game or a movie, or you can do something that's life altering change your perspective on other people and yourself. It's not just instructive about that one culture that they're, they're going to visit, but it says the whole world is like that. You are going to learn something about the entire world by this one two-week experience.
before this program, I didn't even really know about any of these villages or how they survived. It just didn't really matter in school. And now that this program's helping, I'm just learning about these different kids that are in Alaska and how they live. That just, it didn't even exist to me before, and now it does. They are our neighbors, and it's really important that we learn about them, we know how they live, and understand where they're coming from. I think acceptance is probably the biggest thing that we, we have to learn from them. Like I said, they were totally accepting of me. They, they didn't even question it. It was, it was almost an instant thing. It felt like I was kind of like part of a big family. Here comes Clark. He's no different. I was happy to have him home. Home, you see? Ha happy to have him home. When I left, I was just, you know, I'm still mind boggled just by this whole experience because it just seems like a dream to me, kind of like, did that really happen? It's absolutely crucial for Alaska to have a program like this in place, to bring these two cultures together. Almost every political problem in Alaska breaks down on a rural, urban, native, non-native basis. Self-determination, uh, self-realization, access to lands, subsistence, uh, quotas for fishing. Those children who have a better understanding of the lifestyles of the people of Alaska are going to make better decisions. You get a lot better informed about these issues. You have a better mind when you actually make this decision. And when I'm voting, I know that I'll vote differently now than I would have before I'd gone out there. It is such a total attitude adjustment that in everyone that they talk to, they just bubble about this. So their experience gets multiplied many, many times. The reason people need to go out there is because you have to experience it yourself. You have to interact with the people. It'll make you more bold person. It'll make you more well-rounded person. It was great out there. I, I love my time out there. I love the environment. I love the people. And I like to be able to go out there in the summertime when they go fishing and boating. Having experienced it is a very, it's a very, it's a different kind of knowledge than just knowing it and hearing about it. And so I think it's more, it's a, it's a knowledge that's a part of me. If I could send anything out there, I would, uh, I would send pizza, which is something we were asked when we got there right away. Is did you guys bring pizza with you? And I think I would give the kids out there just the knowledge that what they have is something very special. Unalakleet, Alaska is a village that's right on the edge of three cultures, the Yupi, the Inupak, and the Athabascan people use this area as a trading place, a gathering place. For years and years and throughout history, people would travel to Unalakleet, as they're doing today. Maybe not to do business trading and bartering, but for health reasons. Let's take a look at how the residents in Unalakleet, Alaska are building a brand new health clinic. Thousands of years ago, Inupiat walked these hills. They hunted the land and fished the sea. Archaeologists continue to find ancient house remains along the beaches here. It would be hard for these ancient people to imagine how Unalakleet looks today. It would be hard for them to imagine their descendants building with these. It's all metal studs. Uh, they, they make a better, truer, straighter wall than uh, conventional wood, wood studs. Just a few years ago, it would be hard to imagine a multi-million dollar facility funded by the federal government built almost entirely by local residents. But Norton Sound Health Corporation felt it was important not only to build a new clinic, but also to build a workforce. Norton Sound partnered with the Denali Commission, who fully agrees with the concept. The money stays in the community if we can, 
To do this, however, in a cost-efficient manner means that the employees, the, the workers, have to really be trained. So far, it seems to be working well. The folks here are willing to work hard, put in long hours, and work right through the winter. Well, except... I call a uh, work stoppage when the temperature hits 35 below. And this uh, air compressors didn't want to work, and uh, we, ha we had rented a boom truck, and it was just too, too cold to work the controls at 35 below. Today, the men here are installing the sprinkler system. And penetrate both directions. Right here? Yeah. An expert in sprinklers flew into Unilaclete to oversee the specifics of the operation, but it's the crew that's doing the work. The crew here will admit that they may take a little longer to finish the project, but at the end of the day, they know this will be more than just a new health clinic. It shows the pride of pride that the people have that our people are building their facility. And I'm very, very, I'm very, very proud of my crew that, you know, that it just shows that they have pride in the building, as do I. So. The Denali Commission, Alaskans, working together to build a better Alaska. Terrence and his crew are hoping to have the new health clinic completed within the next six months. Thank you everyone for joining us here on Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Native Information. God bless every one of you. I hope you have a safe and joyful week. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week. To purchase a copy of this program, ask for Heartbeat number 22203 and send your check or money order for $20 to Jeannie Green Productions, 6216 Old Seward Highway, Anchorage, Alaska, 99518, or give us a call, 907-563-7440.